Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Ellen Crocker. She's at the University of Kentucky. She's a forest health specialist there. Good morning, Ellen. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. Well, I'm glad you're here today because we're going to talk about a species that when you say the name honeysuckle, you know, you have pleasant thoughts. The sweet smell of honeysuckle, mm -hmm. but this is a little bit different. Well, and I don't know about you, but I remember as a kid sipping nectar yes. and honeysuckle flowers. <laughs> And it just has these really happy memories associated for me. And I was really disappointed to find out when I started studying natural resources that honeysuckle is actually an invasive species. It's not native to here, it's from Asia. And while you know, it does have these really nice flowers, it doesn't stay put in our landscape settings and it will move into natural areas and take them over. So you'll just get a dense sea of honeysuckle. And not only is that a problem, for your woods because you can't get the native tree seedlings growing into the trees that you want to see long term. You just have kind of honeysuckle crowding everything out, but you also don't have a diversity of different things. You just have honeysuckle. Well, and it gets really dense. And so yes. like if you're enjoying walking through your woods and it's there, you it can, can be problematic. That. Yeah, no, that's going to be really tough because it's just this dense wall of honeysuckle thicket. Um, and it's actually not our only invasive honeysuckle. We also have an invasive honeysuckle that's a vine as well. But they both have those same flowers that you might kind of remember. Um, they're kind of pretty and have that great smell. Sweet smell. Yeah, yeah. And But both of them can be a big problem in our natural areas and woods. Yes, and some people might argue, you know, that with pollinators and different things like that, that it's important. But if is there any way that we could manage it? Definitely. And I think that the problem isn't that there's just one or two, it's that it's taking over when it's there. And so if you can catch it before it establishes, um, you know, catch those one or two little plants, pull them up, uh, get them out of there and prevent it from establishing, that's much easier. Once it's really widespread, you can still manage it, but it's going to take a lot more work and a lot more persistence. Not only are you going to have to get rid of what's there, uh, maybe pulling some of it up, maybe using systemic herbicides that will not only kill the above ground portion, but the root system as well, because if you just cut it, it's going to come back even worse. Um, so not only do you have to get rid of that, but then you've got to continue watching and scouting for it to arrive again because birds eat those red berries in the fall and will spread them all over the place. So you're always going to get new arrivals. Absolutely. So you mentioned this was bush honeysuckle, right? Yes. Because there are several other honeysuckles. Yeah, there's bush honeysuckle. There's another invasive vine honeysuckle that, again, you might find it sold commercially. It's a pretty species that people might use in their yard or landscape. But in natural areas, it can take over in carpet areas. It can grow around small trees and actually kind of strangle them. Um, but we do have native honeysuckle as well. We have a beautiful native coral honeysuckle vine um, that I think is gorgeous and a great landscape alternative to the invasive vine honeysuckle. So just really knowing what to look for. Mm -hmm. And so what do we look for with this particular? So honeysuckle has opposite leaves. You can see these two leaves are opposite each other. And uh, this bush honeysuckle is going to grow as a really dense thicket. Um, not just one plant here or there, but a ton of them. It has those beautiful white to creamy yellow flowers uh, that smell nice, and those develop into red berries. This one kind of looks like it has something going on with the leaf here. It does, and normally when I talk about plant diseases, it's how to avoid them or them being a problem. But this is one I'm excited to see. This is <laughs> honeysuckle leaf blight, which is thought to be a native fungal pathogen that causes leaf problems in honeysuckle. And most of the time it's pretty minor. You know, leaf here too is not gonna hurt your honeysuckle. Unfortunately, I wish it would, but it seems like it might be increasing. And it's something that I'm looking at. And I'd love if people see these symptoms to report them using the iNaturalist app. I'd like to know where this is and where is it causing damage so we can figure out is this something that could be a tool in the toolbox for managing invasive honeysuckle going forward. Absolutely and iNaturalist is a free app that you can download and you can just take a photo and tell them where it is and then it'll be captured into a library database. It sure will. So if you see honeysuckle leaf blight make sure to let me know. Report it on iNaturalist. It's a great resource anyway for learning about different species and identifying things. Absolutely. Well, appreciate the information. And if you have questions, you can always contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.